In this tutorial, you will learn how to design interactive objects and implement them using a driver class. You'll be learning basic object-oriented programming concepts such as classes, objects, and constructor methods. In the real world, an object is an entity with an identity that distinguishes it from the environment. Basically, an apple, a bike, and a person are all objects that last long enough to have a name. In terms of programming, an object is a piece of software that has some kind of identity, state, and behavior. Object-oriented programming languages such as C++ and Java use a style of programming called object-oriented programming for representing real-life objects and how they interact. For example, a key can be represented in terms of state and behavior in relation to a lock. A key has a state, or a set of attributes, such as groove pattern and color. A key has the behavior of going into locks. Meanwhile, a lock has the behavior of opening in response to a key, if it's correct. To represent a key programmatically, you will need to define the state and behavior of your key with a class. State is a collection of data fields. Behavior is a collection of methods, or functions, that operate on data. All objects are instances of a class. A class can be thought of as a template for creating objects. A class is really a user-defined data type for creating customized variables known as objects. A key class would define the characteristics of key type objects. A data field code could be the key's code, which can be represented as a number combination, a password, or the physical patterns or grooves in the key shaft. A behavior the key can perform is unlocking a lock. If the key code or pattern matches that of the lock, then the lock will perform the behavior of opening. So a lock and key are examples of real-world objects that interact. Here is a simple demonstration of how to design objects using Java. Think of real-world objects and think of them in terms of state and behavior. Start planning out their design on paper. Then elaborate so that they make sense in terms of the programming language. In order to use your classes to create objects, you need a constructor, a special method that uses the new operator to instantiate a new variable. An example you might already be familiar with is using Java's predefined scanner class to create objects that read in keyboard input. Your constructor can have arguments that allow you to customize the objects you create. For example, the key constructor lets you pass input through the parameters and store them in private data fields, which can only be accessed by invoking one of key's public methods. So now we have everything we need to create new key objects. But what good is a key that doesn't do anything? In order to have a functional key, we need to give it another method. Let's call it the insert method. This kind of method is known as a getter method because it retrieves data from the inside of the class for external usage. The purpose of the insert method is to get the key code so that we can apply it to the lock object. Next, we'll design the lockbox class. The lockbox will contain private data fields that can only be accessed from the outside of the class with the correct key object. So the lockbox has a code for unlocking a secret number stored in the money variable, and the state of either being open or not open. The lockbox constructor will automatically set the open variable to be false. The only way to access the money is by using the correct key code. The public method unlock will take in the key code as a parameter. In order to actually implement and use these objects, we will need to create a driver program. The driver class uses composition, since it uses objects from outside classes as its own data members. So first, the driver will ask the user to enter a key code. That key code will then be used to invoke the key constructor. Next, the lockbox constructor will create the default lockbox object. The key and lock objects will interact through their methods. Once again, we see composition in action. If the key code matches, 
then the lockbox's open variable will be reset to true. When the program reaches the open method, you'll get to see the contents of the lockbox if open is true. Otherwise, you'll get a failure message if open is false.